This book has been 20 years in the making, probably. Um, when the last, when the second edition of Pride of the Bay came out in 2003, and basically since then I've been looking to find whatever sort of story I can find of Glenelg footy or its players or the people behind the scenes and basically been interviewing people since then um, and getting stories ready and finding photos and memorabilia and cuttings from newspapers and all sorts of different things to try and make what's really like a scrapbook of the Glenelg Footy Club. This isn't a chronological history that goes from 1920 when the club was formed to 2022. What it's trying to do, that's what Pride of the Bay was like, but this one's trying to just have lots of different stories of the different characters and great games and near misses and disappointments, the things that, that make a footy club. And the main thing that I've discovered in this time that makes a footy club is not the champion players, and this club's had plenty of champion players, it's the champion people. There's so many champion people who are just so interesting to talk to about their footy, about their lives, and I've tried to take this book a step further by making it about people's lives rather than just about their footy. So it's not about a game that happened on the 12th of August 1946. It's about the people who were playing in that game, possibly what they'd done. I've done chapters on Alan Crabb and Colin Church and Cyril Hofts, a guy who was the captain coach of the club's first ever win in 1925. And they all have extraordinary stories of what they did in war time, which are, are stories I've done in the book, which sort of depart from the footy a little bit, but are about the people who make this club so great. The, the past 10 years have been huge for this footy club. It came from a position where it was almost bust, almost bankrupt, the, the grandstand roof blew off. There were some really terrible times where it didn't look like we'd make it through till the centenary. But the past 10 years there have been an amazing lot of developments here and, and one of the great ones has been the addition of women's footy. Glenelg was one of the first four Sandford clubs to have a women's team. Um, they've really pushed it strongly, it's become a huge part of this club, it's become like one club and of course the women won a premiership in the centenary year which is wonderful and we've I think given a, a good coverage to how women's footy started here, what it means to the club, what the premiership did and a look at some of the star players and players with really interesting stories as well. One of the biggest things about a footy club of course is its fans so we've devoted a chapter to the fans of the club done some stories on different people and their families and how their support goes back generations. Uh, people who refuse to miss a game. Um, lots of different sorts of people who, the snouts louts. A lot of different people who make the club what it is. Add the atmosphere to the club. And we've got 10 or 12 pages of photos of fans with their favourite players or at their favourite games, or celebrating after the 2019 Grand Final, um, just dressed up in their Glenelg gear, so there's a whole heap of fans in there, so that hopefully you can be a part of it as well. And I wouldn't have been able to do it on my own, I've had great help from lots of people who are well known to fans of the Glenelg Footy Club, and that would include guys like Andrew Capel, and Zach Milbank, and Mike Sexton, and our own Georgia, We've got people writing, I've got actually 20 different people writing stories. Some have written specialist stories on things they're particularly interested in, but I try to get as many people involved as possible and make it more than just a, a story of from here to here. It's a story of moments and things and people who are at games or new people or related to some of the famous people who've played here have written stories and it, and it gives it a different sort of feel. It's lot, lots of different viewpoints. Um, and heaps of photos. <laughs> I actually, I think there's more than 2,000 photos in it and I've actually had to prune probably three-fifths of the photos I've got to get back to those but there are lots that are from family albums, that are people, the photos of war, people during war and stuff and all sorts of different things that I've managed to, to find um, that give something a bit different, give you a bit of a background to the people who've made this club.